I always say there are invisible banana skins and unspoken words of racism thrown at black people every day of their lives. And we just assume because we don't see it anymore that it's not there, which is very dangerous. As a footballer, John Barnes both witnessed and was himself the subject of racist abuse throughout his career. He was born in Jamaica and moved to England as a 12-year-old in 1976, signing for Watford and future England manager Graham Taylor just five years later. We were playing against Oldham, and some of the fans were racially abusing Roger Palmer, who played for Oldham. Graham Taylor heard some of the racial abuse from some of the Watford fans, and at halftime when we went in, he went up into the PA system, got the microphone from the man on the PA, and he went into the middle of the pitch and he said, if there's any more racist abuse to any of these Oldham players, we've got two black players playing for us, you will never come to this football club again. I can't speak hard enough of that man. While John's career progressed, he would move to Liverpool in 1987. Attitudes in society and within football stadiums remained largely unchanged. It's a great picture and a very iconic picture. This is 1987 or 88. For the previous eight years, this was happening most weeks. You know, whereby bananas were on the field. I think it was Cyril Regis said, if I had collected all the bananas or thrown on the pitch, I'd be able to open the corner shop. Over three decades on, the vitriol continues, most often on social media. The abuse directed at England's black players following their shootout defeat at Euro 2020 highlighted the issue once again. Gareth Southgate said about the impact that the black players have had in changing people's perceptions and bringing the country together. And then within three minutes of black players missing penalties, that all went to pot because all it takes for us to revert back to the bad always or for us not to support the black players is for them to miss a penalty. What real tangible evidence is there that because they're good, Britain is changing its perceptions of them? Not enough has changed in 30 years, and there's growing concern that the action of taking the knee is not sufficient on its own to finally turn the tide. My worry is that we'll continue to do this for 20 years and nothing will change. Football can start the conversation, it can highlight the issue, but it cannot change the issue. The conversation has to move on. The tangible difference being made by this um, act should really then move on from, from, yes, we're taking the knee, but why are we taking the knee? Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. How many more black people have to die? It's about black lives mattering. End of story. And if we believe that black lives matter as much as any other life, we should get behind it. If you look at the demographic of the people and you see the allyship that's there, and with racial bias, you can then add sexism, homophobia, or other negative dynamics to that statement. The shallow understanding of those biases by good people, which these all are and we all are, is the problem. The journey of a thousand steps starts with the first step. We're not taking the first step, we're trying to start on the second. And the first step is to own within ourselves and say we discriminate. We all do. And until we do that, we'll never get anywhere. <laughs>